Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So let's start out with the silver chart here uh, because I want to talk about the difference between fundamental and technical investment. Um, the latest interview that I did, if, you've listened, if you haven't listened to it, it's uh, uh, on the member side, on the public side, on Silver Doctors, an interview with Elijah about Bitcoin and if you look at the comments there's all kinds of precious metal people going crazy about um, you know I thought this was about precious metals well it is about precious metals in the sense that precious metals are the best and have been the best protection against a corrupt government that wants to steal all your money uh, and they still are but the fact of the matter is that there's nothing really going on in the precious metal markets right now, unfortunately. Uh, and I was talking to Jennifer about it the other day, and I think her statement was uh, very apropos, where she said, well, pretty much everything that can be said has already been said about it. And that's really true. I reiterate a lot of things I've said before. Uh, I've done a lot of videos about recycling, unmining, uh, the, the rigging, uh, it, it's all just been done to death. Now there's going to be some news, there's going to be some new information coming out, there's no question, I don't have a doubt in my mind, but it's not right now. Right now the hot place is uh, cryptocurrency, so that's what I'm covering, and uh, if something happens in silver I'm definitely gonna jump in and cover it but I'm gonna do another video here on cryptocurrencies uh, because that's what's happening now just to comment on this chart here uh, there is something that stands out and that is this uh, this little bottom graph here of the uh, large and small traders and we've commented on that before we commented on it when it was uh, back in this area and now it's collapsing but you can see it's definitely in the widest area it's ever been um, something that is similar to what we're seeing now would be maybe when uh, we started to go down from this area or this area which could predict a bull market uh, but right now if we're talking about fundamentals versus technicals uh, this chart strictly based on the fundamentals and that is if you do fundamental analysis determining the value of the asset and you determine that the asset is undervalued this is an extremely bullish situation for a fundamental investor who has determined that the asset is undervalued on the on the flip side of that this is a tremendously bearish technical situation uh, the time you want to buy on a technical basis is very clear. It was right here in the summer of 2010 where we had a very clear breakout without a pullback. Most breakouts have a pullback to the breakout point. You can see this breakout did not have a pullback. Uh, it didn't have a pullback until 30 bucks and the pullback came to a non-support uh, level. So it just turned around and went right back up. So this was the time to buy, an incredible buying time. But technically, it is not a time to buy. Technically, we are still in a downtrend. Um, so that's really important. You have to keep in mind the distinction of why you're investing. Are you investing because of the fundamentals? Are you a Warren Buffett, George Soros type who sees value and is buying it cheap and waiting for it to become fairly priced? or are you playing the trend and that's absolutely critical now gold survivals asked about pot coin and the reason I'm covering this is because it's a good example of a way to learn about a cryptocurrency so the first thing I did was I went and downloaded the wallet which you can see it's in the process of downloading it's uh, 170 weeks behind and I think he was having some problems syncing to answer some questions here, from my understanding of this coin, just the brief analysis that I've done is this is a proof of stake uh, coin. A proof of stake coin is a coin that doesn't use miners in the traditional sense that Bitcoin and Litecoin do, where the, the way that one gets coins 
is by running a miner. In a proof of stake coin, the wallet itself is the miner. So, but because this uh, wallet has not brought down the blockchain, you can see I'm still 169 weeks behind. Uh, I can't show you the staking function. If, if we go down here and click on this little up arrow, you can see it says, the message is not staking because wallet is sinking. So it, it can't stake until uh, the wallet is synced and it has eight active connections. Now obviously it's not gonna stake even if it is synced if it doesn't have any coins in it because it, it's going to use the number of coins uh, that you have and it's going to use a certain percentage that's an algorithm determined by the programmers so let me take you over to a proof of stake coin that I have that uh, really isn't worth a lot but it was a coin that I liked uh, mainly because I like the wallet I've shown it once before this is philosopher stone so this is a proof of stake coin you can see I have about my total balance is two hundred and twenty six thousand I can't remember what the float is. It may be two million. It may be four million. So I either have uh, ten percent or five percent of this coin, and it's currently staking. The way that you do that with this particular wallet is you just go up and you well it's it's lock it's uh, unlocked right now. But if I lock it, I'll show you how to unlock it. You click unlock wallet and then it puts a check in this box for staking only. I have it password protected, so I put my password in and unlock it for staking only. I'm not gonna send any coins anywhere. I'm just unlocking it to stake. So the number of coins it's staking is right there. And if you go down here to the staking icon, you can see your weight is 172 or your weight is uh, 1,729,000. Network weight is uh, whatever that is. That, that's confusing, but you can see it gives me a message. I have a 50% chance of producing a stake within 18 minutes. Now, if we look at the history here, you can see the stakes that I produce. I just fired this up before I started the video. And so you can see the potential stakes that are coming in. When it's in brackets like this, okay, we just got a message here, uh, minted to coins and uh, but if it's in brackets it's not confirmed yet so if we scroll back here let's go to this one here 74 so you can see back on the 14th of June I have 3065 confirmations that I minted I staked 74 coins so what happened was it increased the amount of coins that I have by 74 so obviously if you're using a proof of stake type of coin then having your wallet running and you can see down here you can highlight this icon it shows you the number of active connections there's only five this, this is not a successful coin right now it's not really supported by the the uh, programmers and uh, so there's not a lot of interest in the coin it's listed on cryptopia that's the only place it's listed I think the entire float is probably only worth a couple bitcoins but it is a really neat wallet and it really shows you the how the proof of stake works so uh, once the confirmations come in that uh, are enough to validate these coins then they're just added to the total number of coins that I have so obviously the more coins that you have in a proof of stake wallet and the more time you leave it now this is just an assumption on my part I may be incorrect but I believe that the more time that you have it running and staking the more coins you're gonna get this is a wallet that I fire up every couple days you can see on the history that I fired it up tonight but I hadn't fired it up before that since the 15th and then before that's the 14th 13th 12th so um, I was firing it up quite a bit because normally when I'm trading I'll, I'll fire up uh, the proof of stake wallet. So you can see pot coins still coming down. Now, what's the issue with these, we'll say cannabis type coins? Well, pot coin was one of the first ones to go here. Here's the, the chart of it. And again, what I said before, you have to determine if you're gonna be a fundamental investor or a technical investor. 
Now, if this, uh, and ideally, the best situation is a situation where you have a trade that is both fundamentally and technically sound. Now, this trade is technically sound uh, because the things I look for, again, I look for a coin that has a potential of going into new all-time highs. And you can see the old high is right there at 7,000. If you come out to the long-term chart, you can see the old high. Let's go to the one day and all, 7,000 and the coin hit that back uh, September. Now it's been challenging it, uh, that area with a series of higher steps here, you can see right here. Uh, so it's matching that price that it, that it put in back in September of last year, but it failed. Uh, normally I like to buy breakouts into new highs, but the second thing I like to buy the most is uh, pullbacks from attempts at uh, new highs. So I'm currently long folding coin, for example. And folding coin is today's big winner. I think it's up 65%. Well, it's up 61% right now. So uh, this coin, I saw it go into new highs. That was very bullish. Uh, I didn't catch it when it made the move, so I watched it very carefully through the day. And when I saw it reach this point right here, I started to buy. I don't think I caught this exact bottom. I started uh, buying somewhere in that area. And uh, the question is why? And the answer is, well, because it's a pullback right to support. So that's the normal situation you see with uh, breakouts is to get a pullback not completely, it won't always hit it, but it will bounce, and this is again what I call the slingshot effect, where it will run up, it will pull back, and it will slingshot higher. So this is one that I'm long, uh, and it, it is, again, technically, this is an excellent chart. Now, fundamentally, I don't know anything about the coin. I haven't even tried to download the wallet. So it's a risk of a small amount of my capital based on a technical chart that could truthfully could go to zero tomorrow. The coin could be delisted and essentially the investment goes to zero. That's the risk you take. Uh, if you want to be really picky, then you want to find perfect charts with perfect fundamentals. Uh, Library coin is one of those. It right now doesn't have a perfect chart. I'm, I'm still long some of it. It looks like it wants to go into new highs. I like the chart. I like the coin. I have the wallet. So let's get back to the fundamental analysis of how you make that choice. Uh, again, Potcoin's wallet is coming down here. Uh, I really won't make, a, if I'm making a fundamental investment, I won't do anything until I have the wallet and then I can send the coins back and forth. Another thing I look at is the uh, the website and especially the Explorer. So you can see here, this is uh, the Potcoin Explorer, Potcoin Blockchain Explorer. And uh, the main thing that I look for here is the number of transactions. So you can see from this information, ignore this extracted by proof of stake because it's not it's not just the staking transactions, it's also sending and receiving transactions. But you can see here that you had uh, 728 and 17,000. But a little bit concerning here is the number of minutes. We can choose to show last 100 blocks and you can see that there isn't a lot of activity in this coin. In other words, it doesn't appear that the coin is being used to send value back and forth between uh, people, but rather is just being staked and invested in. So that's kind of a negative on it. Um, a positive on it is that it's the first one of this group, this, I'll call it cannabis group. And you can see here, those were yesterday's big winners here. We have cannabis coin. You can see the chart. Uh, very excellent technical chart. You can see a breakout, a continuation, now a fallback. But I believe this is only listed on Bittrex and Yobit. Uh, and Bittrex tends to be a very thin exchange as far as buy and sells. Uh, and then you also have 
hemp coin and you can see the chart on that same exact formation and then you have dope coin <laughs> so you have pot coin dope coin hemp coin and cannabis coin and they're all doing basically the same thing with pot coin being the first one to break out so pot coins probably going to be uh, the next mover based on the fact that it was the first mover now what do these things mean I have no idea uh, they're not technical and they're not fundamental they're sort of just hunch trends uh, there's something that uh, people are operating on hunches they're thinking that maybe uh, one of these is going to succeed there will be an uh, alternative uh, economy where drugs can be traded for their own cryptocurrencies maybe I don't know that might be the speculation why people are all jumping on these at the same time another trend that I've noticed that uh, one of the reasons why I went long folding coin is a price trend here uh, I noticed it when I saw the movements in uh, Bytecoin and Sia coin and Digibytes and I pointed this out before uh, you can prioritize these based on price you can see that Zcash has the highest price at 0.14 Bitcoin so Zcash is actually worth well you can go over to USDT and see here that uh, Zec is worth $362 you can see Ethereum comes in second at $308 uh, but Bitcoin's all the way up at $2,600. So when you order these based upon price, uh, you can go down and see the cheapest one is Dogecoin at, uh, remember that you can only get eight digits here after the decimal place. So the cheapest coin you can ever see is uh, seven zeros and a one. It can't be cheaper than that unless it's uh, traded in Litecoin or some other coin. But if it's quoted in Bitcoin, that's the lowest price. That's the bottom. So these are the cheapest coins, and I did notice a trend of them uh, rallying. And one of the ones that was very, very cheap was Folding Coin. Now it's not that cheap anymore. Florin Coin was also one that was very cheap, and you can see Pot Coin is also one that is relatively cheap. Uh, but Burst, that's another coin that I like the technicals of. Again, I don't have the wallet. I don't know the fundamentals of it it's just a gamble uh, I'm currently long that I'm currently long burst coin folding coin and library coin but again as I said before uh, don't trade based upon what I'm doing because you don't know when I'm getting out and I can't tell you when I'm getting out because sometimes the reasons I get out are just purely intuition and based on some just recent very recent activity so there's no way for me to update you so again uh, hopefully that explains some things on how a proof of stake coin works and uh, philosopher stone is an interesting example of that but uh, pot coin once I have this wallet down then I will probably buy some pull them down try to stake them uh, then try to pull down a wallet to another computer uh, test it one thing I'll test when I'm testing a coin is I will test the transaction times between wallets so ideally the best coin is going to be a coin where I can have a wallet on my laptop and this is my desktop and I can send coins back and forth with no transaction costs and they arrive nearly instantaneously that's what I found with Florin coin that was uh, one of the reasons why I liked it so much many reasons but that was an, another one of the reasons I liked it so much was because I could send the coins back and forth there were always nodes my transactions were always being processed it didn't matter how much I sent it arrived nearly immediately so that's another thing I'm going to do to test this and of course I'm going to buy some try to stake it and see how it works in staking so that's it's really important if you're doing a fundamental investment in a cryptocurrency to do the work of getting the wallet uh, testing out the staking if it's a staking coin uh, perhaps if it's a coin that's based on mining then maybe going to the website and figuring out how to mine it 
and seeing if you know that's what I did with library coin library coin is not a coin that is a proof of stake but it's a, a, a mineable coin so I went ahead and set up the miner I showed you that on a previous video um, I probably only mined about four library coins at a, per day so it wasn't really a profitable thing but at least I could see that uh, the mining worked uh, the wallet worked uh, all of the things worked on it and that's what you have that's the work you have to do if you're gonna make a fundamental investment in a cryptocurrency but again if you're just playing the technicals and you're just interested in buying the coin that's doing the most like right now it's folding coin it's the one at the top of the charts at 60 percent gain on the day and I'm definitely long this coin uh, I'm looking to add on a new breakout into new highs um, I would say that my percentage of getting these right is probably about maybe 1 in 20 so probably a 5% chance of picking a big big winner but when you pick a big big winner and you add on the increases for example if you would have been watching this this morning and you would have caught this breakout right here and bought right there and then added on this pullback and then bought straight into the rise uh, you could have made potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on not a very large investment by simply adding and adding as it's rising so those are the unique situations you're looking for technically fundamentally there's a lot more work that you have to do but uh, I, I suggest doing both of those and uh, the best scenario is one where you have a perfect fundamental situation and a perfect technical situation that's almost a can't lose and we'll talk to you next time